welcome to another video. Are you taking ACT, SAT college testing exam? You or someone out there? Well, multiple students take these college testing exams in a given year, and it can be overwhelming. However, I am just going to talk about the math section. Now, we are all familiar, ACT math section, 60 questions, 60 minutes, calculators allowed. SAT, on the other hand, has gone all digital. Everything is an adaptive test, math section, two modules, and good news for students, calculators are allowed even on SAT now. All right, so that was a brief summary. So what are we doing on this video? Before I tell you, and I go through the examples for these college testing exams, some of them, I want you to do a little bit of a thinking here. So we all know two times three is six. Now, can you think about different ways in how you can come to the answer of six using different mathematical operations. For example, 36 divided by six also gives us a six. Seven minus one is a six, right? And of course, six times one is a, one, uh, is a six as well. So, so many ways in which we can come up with an answer, same answer six in by using different mathematical operations. Now, what's the point of me telling you this? The idea behind this is that in mathematics, and especially on these college testing exams, there is not just one way to get to the correct answer. It's not always being a formula based or wherein you have to literally write it down and solve the entire question, like how we learned in our school curriculums. That's the difference between a school quiz, school, te school test, and a college testing exam. All right, get the point? So I'm going to go over some examples on this video that will illustrate some of the ways in which we can come to the correct answer in a small time, short amount of time. So if you're interested in knowing this, let's follow me along and let's solve some questions. All right, see you around. All right, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see on the screen, there is question number one, which says, what is the sum, underlying sum, of all the values of x that satisfy the given equation. So sum of all the values of x already tells you that we're talking about the solutions of this given equation. And if you will take note of the equation, it is a squared, x squared, meaning it's going to be a quadratic. So first and foremost, I would recommend don't look at the options yet. Just work with the equation. Now remember, the quadratic in a standard form is written as ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. So first and foremost, work with the equation. Step number one, get it in that form. So that form is going to be, so let's rearrange the equation, 4x squared, you will transpose x on the other side and five on the other side, meaning subtract it with minus x minus five, and we get an equation like minus five x minus x minus five equal to zero. Solving further, we get four x squared minus six x, minus five. Now we do have a quadratic, but if you will take note here, we have this number four. So usually it is easier and it is recommended to work with quadratics by eliminating the coefficient or the number in front of the x squared term. So what we will do is we will divide the entire equation by four. So it becomes x squared minus six by four times x minus five by four equal to zero. So now we have our equation, okay. Now another thing, now the question says, what is the sum of all the values of x? What does that mean? That means you have to know the solutions to this quadratic. How do we know the solutions? Either we use a quadratic formula or factorize this equation, whichever way, complete the square or different variety of ways. So uh, how are we going to do that? So there's an easier way. In a quadratic, the sum of the solutions is given by minus b over a and the product is given by c over a meaning the b term divided by the a term and for the product c term the constant term divided by the a term so when we talk about the sum in our equation when we rearranged it let me change the color here so we know when we changed and rearranged we got that equation what is our minus b b value b value is already 6 over 4 and we have a negative so minus minus of 6 over 4 and our a term is now 1 which is 1. 
So this reduces to 6 over 4, which is equal to 3 over 2, right? Let's take a look at the options. We have 2 over 3, 3 over 2, and so on and so forth. Our correct answer is going to be option choice B. Let's move on to the next one. And again, one of the other typical questions that we find on these college testing exams. So as you will see, here your knowledge and concept of uh, exponents is being tested. So what we will do is we will factor this equation. We get 1 plus 1 plus 1 and which is equal to 3 power 24 right there. Add these up, you will get 3 power x times 3 equal to 3 power 24. Don't worry about the constant term. And then again, use exponential rules. This is same base, exponent different. This is x plus 1 equal to 24, which implies this x plus 1 is equal to 24. Why? Because, I'm sorry, I wrote that as 24 here. It will be correction here. This is going to be 3 power 24. Okay, sorry about that. So the bases are the same. So the bases get eliminated. All we are left with are the exponents and x plus 1 equal to 24. Solve this, you get the value of x is 23. And that is the answer for an SAT. You will write it for an ACT. You will be provided options and that's your choice that you will select. So isn't it quick? Moving on, question number three. As you can see here, the question has given you some kind of an exponent to work with. So they say, which of these expressions is equivalent to the given expression, right? So, and we have some options here. Now, do not panic looking at this big number and an exponent. So whenever you have a radical and some expression underneath the radical, a good idea is to separate the number and the variable and write them as fractions. So watch. So 1, 2, 9, 6, I will write that, this number, as 1 over 4 times, then we take the variable x power 12 over 1 over 4. Now also recall from the exponential rules, if there is a radical, this is x power 1 over 2. Okay, so now let's move on. Uh, now we will work our way on to step number 2, which is going to be working with the fourth root of 1, 2, 9, 6. So when you factor this, you will actually come up with 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 power 1 over 4 for 1, 2, 9, 6 times what is x here? This is 12 over 4, all right? So at least when you see here, this is 6 power 4, 1 over 4, and this will become x cubed. At least from the given choices, if you observe, we have only one option with an x cube, right? So here the 4, 4 will get cancelled and the answer reduces to 6x cubed, which is going to be your answer, all right? I work one-on-one -on -one with students uh, uh, explaining a lot of strategies and there are plenty of them. And if you're interested in organizing a session with me, do get in touch with me. My information has, of course, been provided for your reference. And also let me know if you liked this presentation and if this was helpful to you. All right, good luck to all of you who are taking this college testing exam. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.